So we were here at uh, Novacentrix, and uh, who are you? Hi, I am Stan Farnsworth. I head up marketing and sales at Novacentrix, and I'm one of the founding employees some years ago. Uh, we're here at ID Tech X. Uh, event, uh, Print Electronics uh, Europe in Berlin in 2016. And what we've got at our exhibition area today is uh, uh, a few examples of our PulseForge photonic curing tools. And uh, this particular tool, the PulseForge 1200, has been on the market uh, for about two years now. We've seen a lot of adoption and a number of applications, and it's been very exciting from a, a technology developmental perspective. But one of the pieces we're really showing here at, at this particular event are some of the accessories now that we've developed that help to enable even more development and more progress and more innovation and more technology on behalf of our customers. And so this particular piece, uh, this is called the, the EX1 Controlled Environment Chuck. Uh, for photonic curing, one of the key topics is getting a, a good thermal coupling between the substrate that's being processed, the materials that are being processed, and the, the processing base. And so what we've done here is developed a, a, a porous graphite vacuum surface, a vacuum chuck to hold down the material and get a very good thermal conduction so we can process a much wider range of materials. So on the key pieces on the side here, we have the, the, the vacuum feeds, we can also use compressed air and, uh, 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 and other gases as part, of, as part of the system. And then some, something goes in there? Right, so the material to be processed would sit from an R&D perspective just right on, the, right on the processing square here. One of the key pieces of this though is not just the vacuum chuck, but this is also uh, uh, an accessory that has the ability to heat or cool the material. So we can heat the substrate to a, a, a pre-arranged temperature or we can apply cooling and get the substrate to a controlled lower temperature that really expands the process window for processing and getting optimal performance from the material. And how this is used, this is shaped the way it is because uh, as we use it, we'll come over here to the sample drawer, put this on here, and we'll lower the stage down. We'll take off some of these uh, uh, accessories. So what we're doing here is we're taking advantage of the fact that the processing stage here was designed to be lowered to accommodate exactly this kind of test fixture. So we'll open this up. We can take this, and it just sits very neatly on top of the stage. All right. So now we can close the drawer, connect our couplings, and process the material. So this fits right on top of uh, the existing uh, uh, the existing tool. So customers that already have one of these can use this, and this really expands the processing capability for a number of samples. Applications where this is especially critical, we've seen this uh, really enable opportunities in displays. In particular, OLEDs and, and even some variants of, of more traditional LED technologies uh, around allowing the photonic curing uh, process and the PulseForge tools to process a variety of the, the OLED or, or LED materials as part of that complex material stack, but without damaging some of the more sensitive materials that companies are starting to use uh, in, in those systems. So we're seeing So what that kind of OLEDs are they, uh, people able to do with your products? Sure. So, uh, uh, diff yeah, different kinds of, of lighting or displays. Really, it's the the, the displays uh, that's been a, a key interest for this kind of technology. Uh, as as that community, the OLED community, the display community, is really going through sort of this hyper competition right now, where. Uh, we're seeing in the press, they're really being aggressive in rolling out active matrix OLEDs and some of these other uh, uh, new technologies. And companies are looking for any kind of technology edge that they can get, either to bring the cost down, to make the OLED performance higher, brighter, uh, uh, durability, uh, also cost is always an issue for, for production. Is and this so for flexible OLED? Yeah, of course, yeah, absolutely, is, flexible OLEDs, right. This is printed electronics? Yep, sure. Yeah, printed electronics. Now the OLED itself might be in a rigid display, but some of the some of the key technologies uh, uh, that are being adapted for that are moving it towards being able to flex and curve with plastics. And, yeah, with plastics, also with flexible glass. Right, flexible glass is uh, uh, a key material flexible as well. Flexible glass. 
So all these awesome things are being possible with Novacentrix. Right, so we're involved in a lot of them, not in all of them for sure, but as companies look to really expand the technology capabilities, we're finding that they're really interested and able to use this kind of advancement to give them more options in the, in the materials that they use. So since, uh, since those years when you were part of the founding team of the Novacentrix, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening in the, this industry. Well, it's a huge amount, and this is an example. Wearables is a big topic right now. This is an example of a, uh, just a concept device that was made with uh, the group in, in Spain, the, the Euracat group. Uh, we've been collaborating with them for a little while now, I encourage you. They have a video on YouTube, actually. If, uh, if you do a search for Euracat, then you'll see how this shirt was manufactured. So there's a whole design there's process. Yeah, it's a, it's a Simon Says shirt, so we can turn it on and, and play and, and, and do patterns with it. Uh, as we think about other kinds of... Right, in fact, yes, here's the, here's the video that's running. So they're screen printing different layers of the shirt and, and doing testing of the electronics to make sure that they're still getting functionality. This is the future of smart clothing, huh? This is a taste of how the future of smart clothing is Absolutely. Gonna this is such a hot topic right now. The ability to take garments, textiles, and integrate some kind of functionality to it. Now, there's a whole uh, uh, emerging industry space around, is that technology around fitness? Is it around style and design? Uh, all of that is happening right now as we speak. Uh, right. So also happening right now as we speak. So we'll check out, uh, um, but you can direct the rest of your questions to the standard now. Yeah. This new roll-to-roll uh, -roll system that we've, we've right. been implementing. All right. So. Let me show it off right here. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. If you need anything else, it's always a very contact. popular demo to show off your, your, your big machine. Uh, what we've done here is, is take that exact same PulseForge 1200 photonic carrying technology, that exact same equipment, put it into a different chassis structure, integrate it with a very simple roll-to-roll -roll handling system in an R&D stage, and this helps companies and institutions and groups take the next step from moving with small sheets to rolls of material to understand the developmental challenges that, uh, uh, that they could be faced with with moving to this kind of larger volume format. So two of the most awesome things I've seen at this show is, uh, is uh, flexible OLED displays, uh, flexible processors, um, so you, you will be involved in those. Uh, we are involved in some of those, right. There are a lot of different technology cells happening in the community right now. What we're starting to see is, is that companies that have been focused on flexible processes, comp uh, processors, companies that have been focused on very specific OLED, light and display uh, generation technologies, companies like us that have been working on conductive inks and processing equipment, all of these competencies now are starting to converge. And that's part of the benefit of coming to events like this is it allows us to network and build relationships with these other groups that otherwise we're working in our areas maybe a little bit uh, uh, separately, but we can come together and take all of our expertise and, and really allow us to deliver something that from a customer perspective is much more interesting. So, so we can do these kinds of roles of material. And this goes from a collection of, of competencies from Novacentrix. In this case, we're using a flexor graphic system from Harper, uh, which is a terrific company and they've been great to work with on the deposition side. Uh, we're using a near IR system from Adfos, uh, which has also been great to work with there, there nearby. But it's this kind of collaboration that really is, is propelling and driving the space forward so that we can build technology solutions for the end users to be able to add value and build market with their customers. So let's say the, the flexible uh, smart, smart uh, uh, clothing, mm -hmm. smart display, smart electronics, uh, flexible everything, if that's the future, are you part of the R&D and also of the mass production? That's the correct. Fab? Are you making the fab of the future? Right. So we have production variations of this equipment in factories right now throughout Asia, some in the U.S. as well, um, and that's really driving and enabling some of these these new products. We're still at the early stage of that. So if we think of an adoption S curve, right, the space and also Nova Centrics are at the early stages of that adoption S. Now, fortunately, from a technology perspective, a lot of the component and constituent technologies are pretty well developed. So this equipment 
in and of itself is very highly developed. The components and the equipment and the uh, materials around this room from the other uh, companies are also very highly developed. But as I said, they're coming together to enable new products from our customers. And that's what we like to show here is, is, is that capability. So you've been involved mostly in the R&D kind of phase and then you will be part of even more now of the mass production right, so, future. Right, so the most of our customers are R&D customers, but I can say that most of the equipment that we ship now is for production uses. So when we think of a percentage, of most, the, the very high percentage of the customers are still in the R&D stage, and that's because they're at an institute or university or a corporate R&D center. But we have had some customers move all the way through this product development process and move into full volume production. People have objects in their houses uh, or they own objects uh, somehow through their, in, around them that were made and enabled by these PulseForge tools. Otherwise, they would not even be possible. And that's exciting for us to see as these technologies are absolutely being adopted inks are being used and it's really validating that there, there is a role for these in the, the, the consumer community. So if there's going to be uh, those 20 billion IoT devices and wearables and everything, you could be a bit, you could be a big part of, oh, absolutely. Uh, of making sure. that happen. Yeah, we're very involved in, in that whole space and helping to enable that. Uh, there's a lot of innovation happening there and a lot of creativity on the application side. You know, we think about uh, innovation, we think about delivering products, but before all of that comes creativity and inspiration. And so throughout all aspects of this technology chain, from companies like Novacentrics building materials and equipment, all the way through to the, to the companies that are developing the actual IoT devices, we're seeing creativity, we're seeing innovation, and we're starting to see an increase in delivering products. And feature requests from your customers? to get new functions, new features, new stuff? Yeah, it's, it's evolving every day. Customers are trying to figure out what they want. So it's a collaborative discussion. That discussion hinges on our ability to effectively communicate to customers what the capabilities are, uh, and some of our experiences and some ideas from our applications engineering team. But a lot of that also comes from the customers getting more familiarity with what the technology capabilities are, such as from companies like us, but then also what market opportunities and market interests are. That's driving requirements. And then on the very far end, it's the consumers who are starting to understand what they want and like in these kinds of products. So it's, it's actually quite complicated because along this entire span from the, the end customer back through the, the different stages of product manufacturing and development to companies like us, the requirements and what the markets need are shifting. So it's really important to be listening, to be in strong communication throughout this technology chain, and then also to be able to adapt and respond quickly to, to changes and to, to an increased awareness of what the opportunities really are as everything is shifting.